Hey guys, happy new year. Now that it's the new year, it's the best time ever to start thinking about the things that we do every day and growing into the person we really want to become. But if we're being honest, it can be any time of the year to do that, but the beginning just feels like the right time. And in 2018, I recognized this as well, and I tried to start a bullet journal to track all of my daily habits, but it just kept falling flat. And it wasn't until recently that I realized why I couldn't keep a bullet journal. It's because I was trying it the traditional way and not the way that suits my lifestyle. I'm a total tech nerd. I'm always carrying my iPad around with me and my iPhone, and I use those tools to make all of my crafts and it finally clicked that I should be making my bullet journal with my iPad. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the iPad to create an awesome bullet journal. So let's get right into the video. First things first, let's get into the tools that I use to create my bullet journal. First, I start with my 2017 iPad Pro. Yes, 2017. I am not using the new hotness that is the 2018 iPad Pro. You can definitely save some money by investing in a previously owned one. I recommend the site swappa.com. I will link that below in the description. I saw that you could get a good condition iPad Pro from 2017 starting at $500 on that site. This is not a sponsored video I have bought tech and gear through Swappa before and it is one of the most tried and true ways to get used tech especially when you're gonna be paying a pretty penny for something like an iPad To draw my illustrations, I use the Apple Pencil, which runs about $100 for the older model. The newer model, I think, runs $129. So again, if you're trying to save some money, you can invest in those older models, and you really won't be missing out on anything other than the aesthetics of the iPad. There's some stronger mechanics, but just ever so slightly. There's some new sleekness with the charging of the pencil that has really improved it, like the side charging. But other than that, it's fine investing in the older models and I highly recommend them. You can still create beautiful things with those tools. Now let's jump into the apps that I use. Unfortunately, I don't use any free apps, but all of them are very reasonably priced for what they deliver. The first app I use, and this is probably the best app I use on my iPad as a whole, that is Procreate. This is the Illustrator's dream tool for only $9.99. Now, anyone who's already in the design world knows things provided by Adobe or Corel are extremely expensive, and you get an amazing suite of tools in Procreate for just $9.99. Now, that is the main tool I use to sketch everything, and then I import it into an app called GoodNotes. GoodNotes is $7.99, and I like this app even though it's not perfect because it allows me to put in custom backgrounds and it digs into that Apple Pencil just like Procreate to create a really natural writing experience. But again, if you're trying to save some money, you could probably do your bullet journal with just the GoodNotes app. The only thing is that the GoodNotes app doesn't respond to pencil pressure, so all the illustrations you would create would feel a little bit more cartoony. That is by no means bad. It's totally fine if you're not interested in illustration that much, you just wanna doodle. But for those of you who do want a more in-depth, immersive bullet journal experience where you create your own works of art, definitely invest in the Procreate app. The first step to creating your bullet journal with Procreate and GoodNotes is to discover the canvas side. Don't worry, I already did that for you. After some experimentation, I learned that the perfect canvas size is 13.78 by 17.65. Had to look at my notes there real quick. But yes, so if you create that canvas at that size, you could use that as a template for all your future pages and spreads so you don't have to ever worry about resizing anything. So now back to how I exported these canvases 
from Procreate into GoodNotes. Procreate has a really nice export feature where you can export directly to your photos on the iPad. I chose to create mine as JPEGs, keep it simple, and I shared that directly to my photo library. From there, I opened GoodNotes and I created a new notebook. To do that, you click on the X at the top of the GoodNotes canvas and then you hit create new notebook. If you don't want to worry about making a custom cover for your notebook, you can choose from some pre-created ones, but for this one, I realized I already had an illustration made, so I decided to make that the cover. I had to do a little bit of jerry-rigging because it was a square orientation and not that dimension I told you earlier, but don't mind me and my jank solution. <laughs> Sometimes you have to just cut corners, and this was my way of doing so. So now that my cover was all set, it was time to import those photos. To do that, I hit the little circle button with a plus on it, hit import below, select photos, and then chose the first page in my January spread. And that really is how easy it is to make a bullet journal with Procreate and good notes. So now that we're getting to the end of the video, I thought it'd be fun to end it with a little walkthrough of my spreads. Here we have that quote I made a while ago, the world is waiting for you to shine. I don't think I found this anywhere, maybe I just made it up, I'm not sure, but I had a lot of, lot of fun making it and I feel like it's a really appropriate way to ring in this new year, this new chapter, and even though the cover of this book does not technically correlate with just January, it would be throughout the whole year entirely, my style does tend to be a little bit more minimal and I have a feeling that this is going to carry its way through the year, so I felt like it was a great way to start it off. Who knows, we'll see how things unfold as I keep making these journals. I've had so much fun so far. And to welcome us into January, I have that stereotypical January calendar kind of thing. For January specifically, I wanted to focus on the idea of the ball dropping, of stars in the air, sparks flying, and you know, all that fun stuff. So in a nice black and white subdued way, I have stars and confetti flying behind a nice little hand-drawn backdrop. And of course we have another quote. This one is, dream big, dream without fear. And that is from Randy Pausch. If you have not listened to the last lecture or read the book, I highly recommend it. He is one of my biggest heroes, rest in peace. He's just changed my life in really phenomenal ways. And I always tell everyone who is having a hard time reaching their dreams to listen to Randy Pausch. And next up we have my habit tracker. I want to track YouTube, coding, fitness, design, and a fulfilling AM, which means getting my butt out of bed early. And I just repeated that calendar style I had from the welcome spread and then repeated that nice easy hand lettering with the flag. And I really love the way this came out. I feel like it is, again, just simple to the point, but also really pretty. Another thing you can see is how the highlighter is working on each of my pages. I really love just the little pops of color it's bringing to my journal. And here we are at my most favorite spread of all time, my mood tracker. I had this idea that I wanted to encompass the ball dropping, all those sparks flying like I talked about earlier, and I thought, oh my god, a sparkler would be so good for this. And I drew all of the days around it with the stars coming out and I'm filling it in again with that highlighter and I think it just looks so pretty. Next up, we have my sleep tracker. I'm not in love with this spread, but I do like the way I have the lines laid out. So I think those just like really minimal strokes are nice, but I think the numbers look kind of messy so I might explore new options. Not a lot to talk about here other than trying to wake up at 5 a.m. I've been pretty successful within the past week, but let's see if I can keep it up. Who knows, that's why I'm tracking it. <laughs> Next up we have my gratitude journal. This one was just really simple. I thought I could repeat that really pretty hand lettering and then do it on the bottom as well. And then I manually drew out all of the numbers in Procreate and I'm using the text tool to fill out each of the things I'm grateful for each day. Very simple, very pretty. I'm definitely gonna repeat this type of method in the future. And finally, we have my ideas spread. This one was just really simple, carrying over that hand lettering and adding some candle accents, kind of thinking the light of the world or the light within you, bringing out those ideas, light bulb moments. And then I just used the GoodNotes pencil to fill in my ideas because I've always been able to 
get them out easier if I write them out rather than typing them out. And there you have it. I can't say that this is an earth shattering design for a bullet journal, but I'm really, really proud of the method I went through to create it. And I think it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. So guys, let me know in the comments down below if you use this method to create your bullet journals, if you have another method, especially if it's with an iPad or a tablet. I'm really fascinated by that. And of course, if you are traditional and like to use an old fashioned but still good pen and paper, let me know about how that's going for you. Has bullet journaling helped you? Are you really not sticking to it? I would love to hear. And also I'd like to hear your resolutions. Put it all in the comments down below. I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you in the next video. Bye.